you sideways. We'll know in a moment how to look on your screen, was it? You should be live right now. I oh, think. we are live. Welcome. Are live. Hey. Welcome back, guys. It's been a little hiatus for us. We had a little uh, little glitch last week, if you will, where we uh, we had posted it on one of our individual Facebook accounts. So if you missed us on the Key to the Dream uh Facebook page, we apologize. So that was we up. missed you too. Yeah, it was a technical <laughs> error on our part. I got to tell you, it was an actual excellent session, though. We it really was knocked it out of the park. Probably our best one yet. Yeah. Arguably, <laughs> arguably one of the best. So, um, really, what we're going to do tonight is kind of uh, obviously reiterate what we went through before uh, yeah. because we don't have that footage anymore. But I, I think one of the bigger things, and one thing that we did cover last week when we were recording it earlier, was kind of a quick recap of what sure. we did the week before, yep. just to get everybody back up to speed. So Absolutely. Um, that topic at the time was finding a home and submitting an offer, as you might remember. And we did get some feedback shortly after that that uh, posting. Um, one of them was about negotiating items that aren't affixed to the property. So right. it's kind of um, your, your lane. I want you to run with it. Things like uh, ride-on lawnmowers. You know, if you're buying a new house and you have a bigger yard than you're used to and you have the old push mower... Uh, you know, you they have a really nice ride on. Can you negotiate that into the terms? Um, and the answer, in essence, is yes. Um, however, it is not considered real property, <laughs> and the lender, right, this guy, um, really uh, shouldn't be made aware of that because it can be uh, inducement, inducement to sale is the yes. word that they use. So, um, you know, even though everybody knows that obviously a riding lawn mower isn't going to coerce you to buy a particular yeah. home. I want to buy your $400,000 house because right. I love that ride on right. lawnmower. <laughs> the house, not so much, but the lawnmower is sweet. No, uh, but ultimately, you know, whenever you have those type of sure. items that aren't affixed to the home, um, you know, you would, you would handle them a little bit differently. Right. And, and so, you know, don't be surprised, you know, if um, during negotiations that those kind of things do come up. Sure. You know, remember, that's not the same as a washer and a dryer. Mm -hmm. uh, those are things that are expected to transfer with the house unless it's right. specifically said that they're not. Mm -hmm. uh, but the ride-on mower. Snow uh, blower. Snow blower. Blinds I've seen quite a few times. Yeah. You know, like the curtains or blinds. Yeah, absolutely. So basically what it, what it comes down to is make those things clear that you want those things. The blinds, yeah. um, you know, right up front. Because there's nothing worse than you have an accepted offer, you're ready to go. And all of a sudden you say, well, what about that, that curtain or that uh, tapestry on the wall or whatever the case right. may be? You don't you want to be too late. Uh, right, like exactly. So, yes, there are ways to do all of those things. So uh, thank you for the question. Yeah. Uh, hopefully that helps answer it, but it really is a case-by-case -case thing. And, again, we just, yeah, there's ways to do it. Sure, sure. And uh, another, another good one that they had was, um, or a point that we kind of wanted to reinforce was, the second showing after an open house because yes. it's it's so important right now, guys. The way that inventory is and how quickly homes are sure. going and how many offers are coming in rapid fire after an open house. Yes. Um, so we wanted to we wanted to touch on that or revisit that concept. So. Well, one of the big things here at Key of the Dream Team is that we have three realtors, so we mm -hmm. can be as available to you as possible. Um, and some might argue three times as much, yeah. <laughs> uh, and that's kind of our goal here is that we can be there with you. So you're obviously encouraged, go to the open houses, mm -hmm. you know, um, because again, why do you want to wait knowing that that house is going, you know, first showings on Sunday, uh, it's going to be gone Sunday night because right. that's really the market that's we're in. Now. So the answer is don't wait, but let your realtor know, let one of our team members know you're going. Uh, let the lender know right. so the pre-approval letter can already be done and ready to go. Uh, I'm not going to lie. There have been times I've pushed John to get three pre-approval letters, three different price points, knowing that we might need all three. I literally did it tonight before I came out here. One of my clients is going to check out a home in Attleboro, and um, I sent the, the realtor three different pre-approvals, you know, yeah. just so they're, they're prepared. They knew that I was going to be tied up doing this, so I won't be holding them up. So Absolutely. you're not putting anybody out by being prepared. Yeah. In fact, you're making it easier for everybody. Sure. You know, it's, it's our job to be there. And to that point with the open house, mm -hmm. go to the open house. But if you like it, Call us. Right away. Get right on it. We'll go back in. You know, we can either get to the end of the open house, schedule a private showing just for the realtor. Uh, so, you know, and believe me, the seller will be very accommodating if we say, hey, we had a buyer in the house. They're interested in writing an offer. Uh, they want me to just lay eyes on it. 
uh, before we actually finalize that offer, yeah. they'll accommodate. They want the offer to come. They want that offer. Yep. So they're going to accommodate us. They're going to let us in, and um, you know we can do that. So yeah. you know, don't be shy. Don't be bashful. You're not putting us out. Yeah, and, and you know, last time that we recorded this, we spoke to the fact mm-hmm. that, hey, we understand that open houses are typically on Sundays. That's why we understand what we signed up for. We work evenings, weekends, all, you know, seven days a week. So don't feel as though you're putting us out by giving us a phone call and asking to run scenarios or run numbers or get a pre-approval or your realtor to have a second showing because that's what we do. Absolutely. Uh, so on to this week's session. Uh, basically, so we're going to now progress to the point you have your offer. It's been accepted. Mm-hmm. Um, where do you go from here? Right. And the next question is the home inspection. Yeah, that's the next uh, step. That's the next step. I mean, that's the big thing right there. So um, you're going to do your home inspection. You have 10 days from the accepted offer to get that done. Mm-hmm. And really, I think we kind of beat up that point last week. Right. Um, it has to be done sooner rather than later. Sure. Um, Especially with volume as you enter into a spring market, things get a little bit more busy, supply and demand, you know, home inspectors are getting calls and, and really booking out a sure. few days. So. You know, and the, the biggest thing is, let's say, for example, you have your home inspection and you wait till day eight. Right. Um, and then you find something that's questionable, maybe structure of the house, some beams or, or a support beam, whatever the case may be. Uh, now you want a structural engineer to go in. Mm-hmm. Well, we have two days. Right. You know, so again, time is of the essence on that. Um, And the other thing, too, is remember, you're hiring a professional fault finder. Mm -hmm. This is someone who's going to generate a 30-page report on everything that's wrong in the house. And I will tell you right now, where you're living probably has 70% of those things that they're going to find, whether it be a plug that has a reverse polarity Mm -hmm. or the pressure in the sink isn't high enough. A lot of those things are, are simple little things. That should not become part of the negotiation. Right. They're not. It's not a honey do list for the seller where you hand them the book and you say, "We want all of this fixed." Right. Or um, you know, the classic is the roof has five or six years left. Absolutely, that's we get all the time. Absolutely. And, you know, let's speak to that and, and whether or not that's something that you should be negotiating. You I know, mean, every situation is unique. Absolutely. Let's face it, it, you know, if you're paying top dollar for the house, maybe. Right. If you're if you're not, or there's a concession involved where they're covering some of your closing costs, right. uh, maybe not. Mm-hmm. Um, so every single one of those is really uh, unique. But I guess in the nutshell is, if you were the seller and you own that house and you had five years left, are you replacing the roof right now? Oh, no. Hey, absolutely. Well, no. Yeah. Maybe three years you will. Right. Um, so those are the kind of things that you, you know, it is something to bring up in discussion. Mm-hmm. Uh, the furnace is at the... You know, tail end of its life. Yep. The hot water heater has exceeded its life expectancy. Right, right. That might be one you want to talk about. <laughs> um, you know, broken windows. They're, those are those are obvious things that yeah, I think the sellers will entertain fixing. Right. Um, so what know. what if what if there were items? So let, let's let's talk about a scenario where there are some items where you really need to get those addressed before you're willing to proceed. How do you go about? You know, what is what are the options for a buyer? When they have that There's a lot of options. Um, you can reduce the price of the of the purchase mm-hmm. um, by whatever is a reasonable amount of money to get those repairs done yourself. Mm-hmm. However, I always caution people that does not put the money in your pocket. Right. Um, so if you don't have the money to do the repairs, it's probably not your your number one option. Mm-hmm. Um, you can have the seller maybe increase how much they're going to cover of your closing costs, right. seller which will put money. Back in your pocket, because it's money you're going to spend on the closing. Right, it's money you don't have to bring to your closing. Absolutely. So, you know, you were planning on spending it. Now you don't. Mm -hmm. There you go. You can do the repairs. Hire your own people. Sure. Uh, If you have family members that are in the business, you know, you got a plumber, an electrician. You want them to do it. You know, you're not going to ask the seller, I want you to do this job for me, but I also want you to use my cousin. Right. Um, You know, so it gives you a little more control that way. Yep. Uh, Or, quite frankly, you can put the list together and say, I would like you to have this done and show me the receipts that it's been done. Yeah. So awesome. these are all, you know, realistic options on how you can get it done. And we, and we talked about last week, uh, earnest money and, 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 you know, how you're going to have a little bit of skin in the game before this point. So when you make an offer, you're putting in an earnest money deposit. Um, but let's say that we have a home inspection. And it's a disaster. There's so many things I'm running away from this home. Um, am I entitled to get that money back? Absolutely. Uh, it's as simple as one release. I, I did we, it again. I acted as Joe Consumer. Right absolutely. There. I love that. I love that. Um, <laughs> absolutely. You basically, it's one quick release. You send it on over, mm-hmm. um, get it signed, and that brokerage that's holding the escrow is going to 
have a check cut, cool. and you'll get it back in a week or 10 days. And, and I think, you know, an important side note, now I'll put on my lender hat, when that happens, because it can happen, it's not uncommon, um, it's really important to make sure that you source that money that's coming back to you. So if it leaves your account, and then you're going to get, say, a $1,000 check back, you're going to want to be able to make a copy of that so you can show if you find a home and submit a loan shortly thereafter that that's where that $1,000 came from. So, And that's uh, deposit sourcing, which we'll certainly cover at a, at a later point. Absolutely. But it's, it's definitely uh, something that we are conscious of in the, in the lending world. Right. You know? right. But I think, I think really those two examples where you have the home inspection and you cite a couple of things that are maybe minor, maybe something that you can maybe negotiate better terms for yourself – or even worse, it's something devastating that you want to run away. I think it speaks to the importance of having a home inspection. Absolutely. Because, let's face it, it is voluntary. You don't have to do it. You can waive it. Right. Don't do it. Right. Get a home inspection every time. And if I think you're, we have an analogy. If for you're that working one. with someone right now <laughs> who's telling you not to do a home inspection or run away, run away. Yeah. I mean, it's, you should never, ever, ever be discouraged in doing a home inspection. It's the biggest purchase of your life. Absolutely. You know, why, wouldn't, why wouldn't you check it out a little bit further yeah. and, and, and peel back and make sure that there's no major... You're going to test drive a car before you buy it. That's you're going to try on your clothes before you buy them. Yep. You're going to walk around the shoe store with those shoes on. Right. But you're going to spend three, dollars $400,000 and not, not actually check it out from top to bottom. Yeah, not lift the hood on it. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, so, you know... Home inspection, critical. Mm -hmm. uh, and quite frankly, it, could, it can save you on the backside of thousands of dollars of unexpected repairs. Yeah. If you go into it eyes wide open and you're willing to take those repairs on for yourself, mm -hmm. that's one thing. But at least you know. And for the nominal amount of money of $400, $600, it's worth whatever it is, it's worth it. It's like a little bit of an insurance policy Absolutely. almost if you look at it. Uh, at least you, you know what to expect down the road. Um, you know, other things that, mm -hmm. you know... We have to tell people, if you do find things that are excessive and you, and you do want to walk away, um, home inspection is refundable? No. Okay. Home inspection is not refundable. The inspector has done his job. Yep. Uh, he did exactly what he's supposed to do. He found the faults for you. Right. Uh, you made the decision to walk away, so that is not a refundable. Cool. And um, I, I think that speaks to having some liquidity, having some money or, or, or understanding that you are going to have to spend some money in the home buying process, sure. you know, and that's obviously to protect your best interest, make sure what you're buying is actually um, in the condition that you'd like it to be. So, you know, and just to circle back, I would say one of the big you things a question about you that, oh, okay. cool. one of the big things about that is um, going back to the open house, mm. you go in the open house, you're looking at the floors, you're looking at the kitchen, you're looking at the appliances. The seconds go around. You know, yeah. you're looking at all of those things. You're not looking for the problems. Mm -hmm. um, so that's why we say, call us. Right. We'll go back in. And again, we're not home inspectors. Mm -hmm. We're not, you know, doing the under the hood check. Yeah. But we can find things that you may not see because we do this every yeah. day. Well, we it's see. easy for your eyes to glaze over when you fall in love with a sure. home. You know, and, Absolutely. and having, having a realtor come in, um, you know, non-biased or... or you know, and, and protecting your best interest is going to help you. But I think we have a question. So we do. And Robert, come on over. This is this Robert. is the third member of the Key of the Dream team that you've actually never met yet. <laughs> this is have... Robert. Hey guys, how are you tonight? <laughs> what was the question that we got online? We got online questions. Can you get it over there, Chris? Let's see. It's Eli. Hey Eli. Eli, what's up? Uh, I missed if we covered it, but it, there is a lot of issues. Can you still move in the home? Will the bank deny the loan? Oh, it looks like we have uh, answers coming in for you already. Nice. Um, Who's chiming in? Is I'm it assuming that's probably Laurie. All right, Laurie, thank you. Today. Um, Way to cover. All right. So, How's her answers? Are they on point? Yep. Uh, right. Unfortunately, so. UI, yes, you cannot move in. If it's, um, if it's major issues and um, you know, I guess, yeah, you can. I mean, you can... If it's an FHA loan, for example, yeah. if the hot, if the uh, if they're considered safety issues, mm -hmm. then you know your loan is not even going to go through. Yeah, property condition uh, is really key, and from a lending perspective, uh, well, first and foremost, the lender never sees the home inspection. Okay, so if they are problems that you are okay with, and it's not going to impact the habitability, which is a, a difficult word to, word to say. I'm yes, surprised I got it off. <laughs> uh, or safety of that home, then usually it's a non-issue, Eli. But if it, if it is a particular loan type, usually government, so uh, Veteran Affairs, VA loans, FHA, and USDA, um, if, it, if it is a safety-related issue, 
um, it wouldn't pass the appraisal portion right. of the process. So home inspection, we might not even know about it, okay? But if you know about it by doing it, um, you might avoid or, or save yourself some headache with an impossible appraisal issue down the road. It looks like we have another question in from Eli. Eli, thank you so On much. Fire tonight. Um, can the cost of the home inspection be rolled into the loan? Good question. It cannot. Uh, that is something between you and the home inspector. Mm -hmm. What you're basically doing is you're paying him directly for um, a product, and the product is his inspection, sure. and it's that report. Uh, it really has nothing to do, again, like we said, it's not even required. No. Um, so it has nothing to do with the home buying process. Mm -hmm. uh, it has nothing to do with the loan, so you cannot. And I get a similar question to that about you know things such as uh, prepaying your taxes and insurance or your closing costs. Can they be rolled in on a purchase? And the answer to that is no as well. And, and on a refinance, absolutely they can, and it's very common to do that. Um, here's the school of thought of the way that I try to explain it is that when you're refinancing a home that you already own, you already have the equity, okay? Your asset is the home that you own. When you're purchasing, you don't own that home yet, right. okay? So um, that skin that you have to put in the game, the costs associated with buying a home, down payment, prepaying taxes and insurance and closing costs, all need to come out of your pocket or the seller can contribute towards that Absolutely. as well. They call that seller concession. Absolutely. So, um, solid question, Eli. Thank you for tuning in, man. I appreciate it. <laughs> appreciate the support. He, we, he we, says thank you. Oh, all right, buddy. Absolutely. Welcome. All right. So we were covering um, home inspection, the importance yeah, of absolutely. it. Absolutely. Um, you know, some of the things that you can and cannot do when you get that report, and maybe there's a couple issues on it. So sure. let's say that you get the report back. It's it's beautiful. Okay. There's only a couple minor things that you know about, and you're going to take care Chris of. Chris is dancing in the streets. Yeah, we're all yeah, dancing. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> so what hap what happens next? Now you're so your offer got accepted. Yep. You sent in an earnest money deposit check. Yep. You did your home inspection. Yep. Now what happens? You've negotiated your terms on the home inspection because there's always going to be something. Sure. Um, and at this point, you're ready to go to what's called the purchase and sale. Cool. Uh, purchase and sale is the actual contract. You've actually done one already, which is an offer. It is a legally binding offer. Yes. However, you're protected by that home inspection. Mm -hmm. uh, so at this stage of the game, you're going to roll into what's called purchase and sale. Right. That is the actual contract. That is something that you can have an attorney do or you can have your realtor do. Mm -hmm. um, that is up to you on how you want to handle it. Um, but it is the legally binding contract to buy the house, and that is when the second earnest money deposit is going to come in. Right. Um, we can talk about purchase and sale extensively. Well, there's some depth to the purchase there, there and is, sale. There and in fact, so much that that's going to be the topic of our next episode. So, Absolutely. Um, you know, our plan is to be back again next week. Again, we had a little glitch last, so we're re-recording. We'll be back at it next week, and we'll send out. So keep a keep an eye on the uh, Key to the Dream Facebook page for, for posts and updates. We had a little weather yesterday, so it got postponed. Absolutely. So, um, if you're looking for us, just sign right in or, or log into the uh, the web page, the Facebook page, and you'll have your updates yep. and know when the next showing is. And again, I want to you know kind of end every session by saying this. Thank you guys for tuning Thank in, you. Eli. Your questions tonight were fantastic. Yeah, I love it. Keep them Thank coming you for too, that. Please. Absolutely. Um, but if you're getting any benefit from this, if you're getting Absolutely, Andy. If you're even a past client and you tune in yeah. just because you know you want to keep in touch with with these guys, yeah, um, or Laurie or or Robert, um, <laughs> whatever the case may be, uh, share this with people, please. Um, help us out. We want to get to your friends, your family, mm -hmm. and bring this to them. Whether they're working with someone else or not, it doesn't matter. Right. We're doing this to help you guys out and give you as much information as possible. Beautiful. So guys, thank you very much. Thank you very much. We'll see you next week. <laughs> nice applause back there. Mm-hmm.